everybody, welcome back. As promised, this week we're going to learn some scale exercises. I'm going to demonstrate right now whole note, half note, quarter note exercise. So I'll start with whole notes, giving each note four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then we'll go to half notes, giving each note two beats. Then quarter notes, each note one beat. Here we go. Starting in... up the minor pentatonic in second position in G on a C harp. So the cool thing about the, the cool thing about the uh, whole note exercise is you, I really get to examine like how good is my tone, how good is my intonation on the three draw bend, and how good is my time? Can I count while I'm playing? So that's really a great exercise for whole notes. Half note exercise, Gives me some of the same thing, but I gotta think a little quicker. One, two, three, four. Back down. Two notes per beat. down one more time. Now I'm going to do quarter notes. One beat per note. One beat per note. Down. start the scale from a different spot, like go down to the one below, play the lower minor pentatonic, and then just keep going up and keep going down. I don't have to start on the root to draw. I can start anywhere. I'll start from the one below here. So I could start from any other note, like I could start from three half step men and just go up and come back down. So that's some of the stuff we're gonna talk about today. I mean, really, we just talked about how to do whole note, half note, quarter note exercises right now. So next, we'll talk about like some scale exercises. That's the stuff I'll start explaining to you later after this short demo. I'll use my new Jason Ritchie signature mic through some lone wolf pedals into a harp gear amp. Here's the first one. I'm gonna start on the second note, go to the first, start on the third, go to the second, start on the fourth, go to the third, start on the fifth, go to the fourth.
yeah, man, just stuff like that, right? Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Stay tuned. It's going to get tough, but it's going to be fun. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another Free Friday. Today, we're going to be piggybacking on last week's lesson on the minor pentatonic scale and how to start playing it. This week, we're going to learn some scale exercises. At the beginning of the video, you heard me holding each scale tone for four beats all the way up and down and then for two beats all the way up and down and then for one beat all the way up and down so and on and on now that first exercise is really good for getting in touch with your intonation your embouchure your tone all these little things that might be going wrong or right in your playing you want to ask yourself questions like Am I using vibrato when I don't want to? Um, am I using vibrato on certain notes? Am I tongue blocking certain notes and lip pursing others and why? Can I play the whole thing tongue blocks? Can I play the whole thing lip pursed? Can I make it sound just as good either way? These are the kinds of questions you want to be asking yourself when you run scales. Scales have lots of purposes other than just making music with them. They get us in touch with our stuff. It's a lot like a quarterback. When you see a quarterback on the football field before the game, he's not trying to practice hitting a receiver in double coverage 40 yards away with an entire D-line coming at him. He's just casually tossing the ball. He's asking himself questions like, what's the wind like today? Do I need bigger cleats? Is, is the grass wet? How's that injury from last week? What's my spiral? How do I feel? These are the same kinds of things. In skateboarding, they say they have a go-to trick. A trick that you do every morning just to kind of gauge where you're at physically, how you're feeling emotionally, all these type of things. Scales are great, great things to do when you're not inspired to check out what's going on. And the cool thing is sometimes they cross-pollinate and you end up getting inspired just by playing them. First, whole notes, four beats per note, check out your tone. Gives you time to think about what the next note is if you're not really sure of the scale. It also is very good for counting. One, two, three, four, move, two, three, four. Next scale, tone, here, move, two, three, four, that kind of thing. Half notes, same thing, except half the distance. One, two, move, two. So I need to know the scale a little bit better to do half notes. Quarter notes, it's easier to count because it's just one beat per note. But I gotta know my scale better. So those are the three warm-up exercises that I gave you in the beginning of the video. I'm just reviewing them now. One of the things that you can do is start the scale from a different scale tone. So I just started it from three draw, bend, half step, single single bend, and went up. I can do the same thing on four. So just starting from different scale tones. Now, if you don't know this scale, you might want to go back to last week's lesson on the minor pentatonic scale or some of my other lessons that cover this. Moving right along. Last week, we talked about things like pedal point jumping up scale tones. It's in the last week's video. The next thing we can do after that is start trying some interval exercises. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on three draw half step bend, go down to two draw. I'm going to go to four blow and go down to three bend, four draw and then four blow. So it's a little bit more complicated because then pedal point because I'm not just returning to the same note, I'm returning to the last note I played before I made my next movement. It's a little bit like saying to yourself, not thinking about holes in the harmonica, but like two, one, three, two, four, three, five, four, six, five. Five, six, four, five, three, four, two, three, one, two. It's kind of like when the cop pulls you over and drinking and driving and asks you to count backwards from the alphabet from F. It's hard. <laughs> But it helps you really familiarize yourself with the scale and gives you some cool licks you can play. I 
struggled with what I was going to teach you guys this week, or really rather how I was going to teach you guys this week. When I was a young man in my early 20s, I got a Howard Levy VHS cassette on how to play harmonica. And I started working with the cassette, and he got into some of this stuff. And the cassette came with a notebook. And in the notebook, it had written out the first three movements of an exercise similar to this one. And it kind of stopped right there. And then it asked me to fill in the rest with a pencil. Now, I felt very angry at this <laughs> because I just wanted the lick. But I learned later the valuable way that it's much, much more powerful to figure it out for yourself and cement these ideas and how they work into your head. Because I can take this technology this two, one, three, two, four, three, five, four, and superimpose it like a template over any scale, say the major scale in second. It pays to sit there and figure it out yourselves. I'm not actually going to tell you the whole scale exercise. Now I'll play it for you, but you're gonna have to figure it out yourself. Two. That's just moving from one interval to the next, going to the third to the second, the fourth to the third, the fifth to the fourth. So you really got to know your scale well. Once you do that, you can start moving it around to different spots on the harmonica. Like you don't have to start on the root, like I could start on one drop. Down. All you overblowers. That's for next week. <laughs> this week we'll concentrate on just two note intervals. So there's the next part. After I learned the whole scale up and down, and it's lower octave, what I wanna do is start shortening it. So I'll start on five draw, go up to the six, four draw, up to the five, four below, up to the four draw. And then instead of going all the way down, I'll stop and go back up. Then I could drop down a scale tone, and instead of starting on five draw, start on four draw. Do them together. So I just did the first one twice, and then did the second one twice.
then up. just start improvising with it. Okay, cool. Let's jump over to some jam tracks and see what I can do with this. So I'm just gonna start running the scale up and down and then I'll do some in interval exercises. Back down, starting on five draw up to the next scale tone. Okay, everybody, if you're still confused, I've drawn out a set of stairs and I've given each stair its own or its own scale tone on the minor pentatonic. So let me show you visually what I'm doing here. So there's the starting tone right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the second scale tone jump down to the first, third to the second, fourth to the third, fifth to the fourth, sixth to the fifth. Da, 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 na, 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 na. Boom, 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 boom. This week we're just going It's like a little kid who's playing on the stairs. Starts on the second stair, jumps down to, to the first. Starts on the third, jumps down to the second. Starts on the fourth, jumps down to the third. Starts on the fifth, jumps down to the fourth. Starts on the sixth, jumps down to the five. That's how it works. down the scale, observing one, four, and five occasionally. So four, four blow.
draw or blow. Up the scale. Same thing starting on four. Five. everybody this has been a great lesson it's tough stuff uh, the best way is the slowest the slowest way is the fastest think about that movie the Goonies where they had the piano that they had to put the next right note in and if they didn't the floor fell out right well remember in that movie you could take all the time you wanted before you figured out what that next right note is that's the fastest way to do this just Think of the third note up, and then where did you leave off? Then the next note, and the next note down, and then the next note up, and then the next note down. Anyway, it's tough. It took me a little while to get it. And it, it definitely is better if you figure it out on your own. So, you know, there is tab in this video of up and down, but once you figure it out, you can do anything you want with it. You can go up in threes, <clears throat> down in threes. You could go up three, down two. And on and on and on. Anything that you can count. One, two, three, two, one. Three, two, four, three, two, right? Anything that you can count, you can do. Simple mathematics of how it's laid out or how you would like to lay it out. Learning that and visualizing that is gonna be the fastest road to coming up with endless possibilities that you can do, not just in this scale, but in any scale, in any position, any scale that you can learn, any position, you can just start taking the same stuff and, and. any scale. It's all up to you. It's been a wonderful lesson and I thank you guys so much. And thank you again for all of you Patreon patrons who are helping support me, keeping these lessons coming every single Friday, right? 
If you donate a dollar, it's 25 cents a lesson every Friday, right? If you, if you can't understand this week's lesson, next week I'll keep it more simple, right? Those of you that are donating more than a dollar, I really appreciate it. You're all making it possible for somebody somewhere who doesn't have a dollar, who doesn't have a credit card, who does have an internet connection to come on here and learn some harmonica music. So thank you, thank you everybody for that support on Patreon. I also got a website, www.mooncat.org. I hear rumors that there is gonna be some touring this year or at least some festival appearances. I'll be out on the road with my man Joe Crown and Doug Belote doing some organ trio New Orleans funk jazz this year. So that's new. I'd like to thank my sponsors, Honer Harmonicas, right here. Who makes these fancy combs for my honers? Tom Halchek at Blue Moon. You got fancy covers too. Anything you want, right? Here's a golden melody in sneak skin, right? With a Corian comb. How cool is that? Lone Wolf Blues Company. They make the pedals, make it possible for me to pretty much plug into any amp in the world almost. If it's got tubes and it's big and it's loud, I can play through it and I can make it sound good. Thanks to Lone Wolf Blues Company. Also the same people that make the Jason Ritchie signature microphone right here. It's easy to hold. It's got a volume control on it. Sounds like a 57 on steroids. We appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Harp gear amplifiers. Can't make noise without an amp. Harp gear amplifiers. Brian Purdy down in Ocala, Florida. I've been playing through this amp for 16 years. It's the same amp I play at coffee shops or I play it at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or with Johnny Winter on his last Grammy winning recording. That's right, I'm bragging a little bit. Being a famous harmonica player, it's kind of like being a famous ping pong player. Nobody cares, except you guys. And I appreciate it so very, very much. Keep coming back and go nuts, kids.